everyone and welcome to another episode of Sporting Directions, it's proudly sponsored by Tsunami Teamwear, with me, Simon Atkinson, and myself, Travis Roberts. For those of you new to the show, Sporting Directions is a podcast aimed at providing some ideas, guidance for those of you wanting to pursue a career in a world of sport. Over the course of this first series, we'll be interviewing a range of professionals from different areas of sport to share some of their amazing stories and journeys with us. We'll be having them share with us their achievements, their struggles, and any advice they may have for us moving forward and anyone else looking to pursue a career in sports. Today, we're very welcomed by uh, Will Skinner. We're very proud to have Will with us. Will is an old friend of mine, so it's great to have him on the show. Will is currently the CEO of UFIT Health and Fitness, but has an extensive background in UK professional rugby, from club level all the way through to international level. So welcome, Will. Let us begin. Good question to start off with. Where did it all begin for you? Uh, Very good question. I mean, to a certain degree, when I was probably, I think, five years old, I got two older brothers and following them down to the local rugby club when I was five years old uh, and picking up a ball and loving the nature of rugby and what it entails and the values that it has. And then also the fact that it potentially become very, very physical at some point as well. And with my uh, sort of hyperactivity that my, my dad was convinced I had when growing up, it was the perfect blend. And that that kicked me off with releasing a certain amount of energy, having the, the structure that it had and, and the friendships that it brought about to, to then give me a decent direction, not only within, you know, rugby itself, but in other sports and then further into the rest of my career as well. Hey, Will. Hey, thanks for that answer, buddy. If I could dive into one section where you mentioned the values of rugby, and I'm guessing like by extension, the values of a team sport. What was it particularly about team sports or rugby that really got you going? What made you excited as a five-year-old? Yeah, well, well, probably, I did, probably didn't realise it at that point, but the uh, elements of team has been, well, all the, all, obviously all the way through my rugby playing career and now into what I'm doing at UFIT. The, the element of working together is something that I absolutely love, getting the most out of other people, but then also the element of team and what that's able to generate out of me as an individual. Um, it gets the best out of me in one, potentially proving people wrong, um, but then also supporting everybody else and and not only wanting to let people down. I am ridiculously, you know, <laughs> punctual to a certain degree because I hate being late for anybody. And, and and whether it comes down to small little things like that or or dedicating to yourself to on a, on a rugby pitch where you are literally bleeding for for your your teammates it's uh, it's something that inspires me an incredible amount and something that is inherent within rugby probably more than any other sport i'd say well it shows that you've got a really strong connection uh, with team sports and that's what finds you like inspiration Having been experienced in like club levels and international levels in a team for rugby union, what sort of inspires you now or what sort of continues to inspire you? Like you've reached the pinnacle, you've reached the top. Are you inspired like a normal guy like myself or what happens? Where do you draw your inspiration from now as a CEO as well? Yeah, very different environments. <laughs> but at the same time, running a, a business like we I am now it, there are huge parallels that can be drawn from professional sport or even sport in general and being part of a team to to managing a business now of 120 30 people that we that we have um, and the dynamics that come with managing people and, and getting through tricky situations and the highs and lows of sport and the highs and lows of of uh, of business um, but then there are probably also other things probably as I've matured and you know grown older and got <laughs> three kids now the elements like that have probably come into my life more and, and and so I'm able to pull on those aspects as well as as the team aspects to to direct me and and to push me forward now that's that's fantastic well you you've obviously lived a very uh, eventful very uh, entertaining life um definitely with your career through professional rugby I want to just go back to the rugby before we move forward to the youth uh, to the uh, experience you've had in youth and transi- transitioning between the two. And what I'd like to ask you is, what what would you say was probably your biggest accomplishment in the world of professional rugby? And how do you think that helped you moving forward in this transition period into the world of fitness? Well, firstly, I'd probably say my biggest accomplishment probably 
was <laughs> not necessarily the thing that helped me the most. Um, my biggest accomplishment, but the thing I'm most proud of was captaining Harlequins for, for the years that I did. You know, world-renowned club. To come from Leicester Tigers, have four years earning my stripes there and, and having, you know, three very successful years and then actually being let go by the club and, and not being having that contract extended to then having the opportunity to move to Harlequins. Dean Richards, who was my coach at Leicester, had then moved down to Harlequins at the time. He offered me an opportunity to move down and I was looking at all sorts of options, looking at university and looking at getting a proper job. Um, and he, he offered me a two-year deal. And I was 22 at the time and I said, no, I just want one year because I'm going to give it one more go, see if I can make it into a, a, a proper career uh, and earn a little bit of money from it. But then moving down to, to Harlequins was a perfect fit for me, uh, working underneath Dean again. And then after that first year, I'd, I'd managed to cement myself within the team and, and actually take over some of the captaincy roles. And then that following year, taking over the captaincy and leading that club was something that was, yeah, it opened my eyes as to what really real leadership is, uh, because I definitely didn't expect some of the elements that came with that. And then it definitely wasn't my proudest moment, but I, I led the club through, through Bloodgate. So one of the biggest um, controversies within the sport and the learnings that I took from that and the failures that I had from that and how the different approach that I would have now if I was to be in that same position would, yeah, that's probably one of the most defining elements that I've had through my career. And But it, to, to strangely, it taught me a huge amount and elements of what I learned really helped me lead our team at UFIT through COVID over the last couple of years, for example. Um, and when, you know, all things hit the fan, it's leadership that comes through and, and it's a sense of team that, that really gets you through the, these periods because, it, you know, it's not just down to one leader, it's down to everybody within that setup leading in their own regard. That's great to hear. And, and I love the fact that you, you've actually started to talk about how your greatest achievement and your greatest failure, you kind of see as, as equal weighting in your moving forward into the career you're in now. So what I'd love to kind of have you kind of develop a little bit more in this conversation is we, we, we spoke about skills and experiences and how they helped you move forward into this career. Is there any one kind of transferable skill uh, above all the others that you said is, is really important to helping you in the career of leading this big fitness company? Um, something that I'm actually not particularly good at, but I'm getting better at. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an introvert, uh, ultimately. I'm not a big personality. I really don't like public speaking and getting out there. I like to make other people better so they can, they can lead. But the communication, I mean, and it's, it's the biggest cliche, but it's the biggest cliche because it's true. Any meeting where you're, you're going through tough times or whatever it might be, they always say communication needs to be improved. And in no matter what situation, I, re I really think it is true to a certain degree. And my communication is getting better. And I've had to really improve that during COVID. I had to improve it whilst I was, you know, captaining Harlequins. Uh, my, and the level of communication is absolutely imperative to be leading well because... You can sit there and keep all the thoughts inside your head and they make perfect sense to you. But until you start sharing them and actually improving them with a good team in and around you, they're, they're, they're definitely not good enough to lead effectively. Uh, and, and so you have to talk, you have to share, and you have to show some vulnerability and be authentic with it uh, and be able to, to take that through and, and lead effective strategies that you've given a decent amount of thought to, you've communicated very well, and then ultimately you want to deliver on. Thanks for sharing that. Like, it's really interesting to hear that introverts themselves can be leaders and that they also have to, like, think about what's going on in their head and how they can get that out. If I could draw you back to some of the barriers, like when you were playing rugby, you were at the top of the game and then you had an injury. What sort of uh, internal communications did you have with yourself as you sort of process this injury or like it was a really rugby was a very strong part of your identity. So how did you redefine your identity and then moving forward, how would you define um, your successes? So what was that sort of mental communication with yourself? 
Uh, yeah, good question. I mean, my neck injury when I was 28 was the finally the, the one that ended my career. But to a certain degree, I'd had a decent amount of preparation in the injury sphere. Like, through my whole career, I had 11 reconstructive operations on various bits of my body anyway. So from my first injury when I was first proper injury when I was 18 I was at Leicester Tigers in the academy and I'd, I'd slipped a disc so I needed a I needed a, a back operation then which took me out of the game for three months so and and that sort of I and you do become pretty isolated when you're in a professional setup or in a team environment and you're immediately pulled out and you're not interacting every day with the group of individuals that you're used to interacting with even from a social aspect you're not you know enjoying the the things that you would usually like to enjoy or you're not able to get out and about and you're not able to get on the training field you become a little bit more isolated and so you have to dedicate yourself in other ways and have that focus uh, largely in and around rehabilitation but then also taking on different things you know whether that's education outside I did my degree whilst I was still playing and actually started that when I, after I had a, a shoulder reconstruction when I was down at Harlequins. And so you have to be able to focus yourself in other ways. And I think, yeah, it, all of those injuries, whether it was my back or my shoulder or my wrist or whatever it might have been, were preparation for the final nail in the coffin um, that happened when I was 28. And, and also having that appreciation that, you know, it, rugby and professional rugby and professional sport is fickle. Um, as I found when I left Leicester, Pat Howard came in and I wasn't the coach, I wasn't the player that he wanted to have in his squad. And so, but, but then I was able to thrive under, underneath someone like Dean Richards, for example. So it's, it's, it's a case of being focused on what you enjoy doing, what, you're, what, what you believe you can do, and, and being able to stay focused when you do feel bumps in the road. Uh, and ultimately, taking those those small elements as as ways of preparing you for really pressurized situations or areas that are a real test whether that's covid or you are having to re retire through injury etc or whatever it might be so that when it really gets bad you 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 can get through it um you mentioned something in your question just in and around identity yeah that, that's it's a it's a massive thing for anybody that's been a professional sports person, but actually anything that someone's dedicated their lives to for however long, whether you've been in banking or whether you've been a PE teacher yeah. or whether, you know, if you've dedicated your life to that for a certain period and then that either you remove it yourself or it gets removed from you, it, it is a huge part of it. You know, what else are you talking about? And, and especially for rugby, there's a certain, you don't want to be seen as the old rugby guy that's still clinging on. There's a, there's, yeah, there's a, a certain image that comes with that. And so you, on the one hand, you're still very proud and you want to talk about it, but on the other hand, you've got to move on uh, and you have to find your next, your next passion. Um, and if, if, if luckily for me, it's in a related field, you know, health, fitness, how the body works, getting more out of people, performance, etc. cetera. Um, I've been, I've been lucky in that sense. But there are guys and girls out there that that haven't had that opportunity or haven't been able to find that passion or it's taken that little bit longer to find. And so they can be lost for a little bit longer, which is um, an, an, an identity comes comes into that uh, in a huge way. Um, throughout that, like just listening to you, you can obviously hear the uh, the amount of resilience that you've developed over your uh, professional career the way that you've overcome your injuries and, you know, being able to pick yourself back up and keep going. I was really interested when you started mentioning perspectives about, you know, finding a different perspective and leading on to your passions. As you have developed and you've moved into the UFIT as the CEO, how could you develop or what do you do to develop passion or resilience in now your new clients? Like how do you help them sort of, develop what you have done throughout your career so far? A huge part of it comes into with our clients is goal setting, you know, it, and, it, and it's something that I didn't really appreciate even when I was playing professional sport. You know, it, we'd talk about it within team meetings and we'd say, right, what's our target? And it used to just be a 
we're paying lip service to it. And I wish I'd used that tool more effectively. It's something that we build into every single one of our client journeys now. They, they come in through the door in the first conversation, you know, you know, what are you doing this for? And some people are, you know, they, they want to look better on the beach because they've got their honeymoon popping up for some people. For people like me now, it's I've got three kids and I want to be able to make sure I can pick them up above my head in five years time. And so mobility of my shoulders and having the strength to be able to do it is, is hugely important. And so actually having that, that goal, that objective goal, which is really quite definite and finite. Uh, but then also that, and I think you've mentioned the word purpose, that, that, that overarching purpose and that vision that sits above it um, is huge. You know, for me, that goal of picking up my kids, but that that purpose and that vision is because of my family. I, I want to be a very good dad and have the resourceive relationships with my family that that are yeah that are, that are very strong. And, and I drive a lot of my you know goal setting in and around what how what does this mean for my family. Uh, and my kids now and my wife and so having that definitive goal and you know your smart objectives that sit alongside that and you can really really quite clearly define it but then having that overarching vision and that that purpose that sits above that to keep you on the straight and narrow when you're talking about your goal of losing 10 kg or whatever it might be is absolutely essential because goals and clearly a fine to you know, just objectives come and go what doesn't come and go is that that overarching purpose and vision that's really really interesting some fantastic advice for for obviously anyone in in any industry i feel uh vision purpose goal setting planning ahead all these key terms have, have come out um and and it sounds like these are definitely skills that you've developed through your professional career transitioning into uh the, the youth fit and the health and fitness industry so no uh, that's some real kind of uh, signposts there for anyone looking to move forward i'm gonna ask to, you to kind of uh, add on to that and, and, and kind of think about yourself back when you were that 18 year old or that 16 year old is there anything you would go back in time and say look here's a bit of advice follow this work hard <laughs> no, to be honest, that's what got me through. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, when I was 18, I'll never forget the first day that I had at Leicester Tigers. I was, um, I was, yeah, coming out of Bedford School, private school, very out of my comfort zone at Leicester. Uh, but I knew the one thing was going to get me through it uh, and kick off my career well, and that was that was to work hard. And the very first session was was with some of the biggest names you could think of in the game you know it was and it was in a five meter channel with i was going head to head with martin johnson you know th those sorts of names and graham roundtrees and your darren garforths all of those sorts of characters who are you know national and international names on the, in the rugby sphere and then me as a, a posh little 18 year old schoolboy, i was like there's only one thing they're going to respect here and it's me working hard and no matter and i was probably my first cap when I was at Leicester Tigers when I was when I was eighteen, I was eighty four kilograms. So I was probably about fifty kilos <laughs> lighter than the average there. But but I I tried really hard, I, incredibly, and 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 would keep going no matter how <laughs> how much I was hurting or or how much I wanted to give up. The element of work hard was something that I would probably say again to me, even though I think that was one of my strongest assets um it got me noticed when i was up at leicester tigers that's the one of the qualities that that dean richards really liked in me that's i think one of the qualities why he made me captain when i was at was i was at harlequins um even though i you know also had the the public school voice uh <laughs> that came with going to a private school um i think he saw a little bit of grit in me and to a certain degree leicester tigers was able to hone that and I was able to cut my teeth with some of the, the biggest names and toughest names in, in the game. Um, and they showed me what some of the values were that were part of Leicester Tigers there, you know, coming off the back of four premiership wins, two European titles. You, you couldn't have asked for a better setup. And I was competing with the likes of, you know, Lewis Moody, Josh Cronfeld, Neil Back, who were all in the same position. And so that as and when an opportunity on the training field or actually within the first team or second team or whatever it might be popped up, then I was able to, uh, 
then I was able to take it. Uh, I love that. I'm definitely going to be taking that that quote away and, and giving it to some of my students. Find your grit. Uh, I like that. Uh, a, a different way of saying work hard and the rest will come. I also loved what you just touched on there about know your values. Um, and that relates back to obviously goal setting and, and knowing what you stand for. Um, and I love that. And that's very clear in, in everything you've spoken about. You, you definitely have some core values that, that, that you stand by. Um, now, you've given a bit of advice to yourself uh, about working hard. The next question I've got is, what advice would you give to anyone maybe wanting to enter into the career you're in now? So, so we're going to move away from the rugby now and, and move toward, more towards the fitness industry, you fit. What sort of advice, qualifications, uh, flight paths, what, what would you advise someone who maybe contacts you and say, I, I want to come work for you fit? What, what sort of advice would you give? What I love seeing in people is, is what, again, it comes down to working hard. Like if, if someone can prove to me that they have, they've, they've gone through trying situations and whether that's using COVID or whether it's personal circumstances, someone's got it laid out all on a platter and who has done incredibly well as a result, you know, fair play. But if someone has, has got to the same level, but has gone through periods of hugely testing times, whether it's in as an individual or their career, family, etc., it's, um, I, I take a lot from that. I really do take a lot from that. And, and, and I appreciate that way more now, having opened myself up to working with a whole load of new people. You know, the first 11 years of my professional career, I only worked with men, right? In a professional rugby setup. you know? Um, now I, I work with people of all demographics, ages, sexes, nationalities, and it's, and the people that are, willing to yeah who, who have shown dedication who have worked incredibly hard to get through periods but then also who are who are selfless and willing to help other people out and work for other people and go the extra yard to 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 show their value and, and show what they're about i love that absolutely love that and that's where i i go okay you, this is how i re reward you as a result um, not just because you're kicking and screaming and asking for more money and a pay rise because you've done one element. Um, I like people that are, are selfless and, and really quite team orientated. It's, it's, quite a, it's quite a strange dynamic at the same time because some people who are super focused on their one goal, salespeople, the world's best salespeople, for example, are absolutely laser focused on what they are. And, and they're often quite selfish in a way and and they can they can do wonders wonders for a, a rugby team in isolation you know uh or or a pnl and so you have to be careful you, you, you it's a case of managing those people and making sure that they are they are you know pulling in the same direction and, and they are making the whole boat go faster not just their their little dinghy i like how you uh touched upon the values that you find important and what they can bring to the team. So just to further on to that conversation, what sort of focus would you ask people coming to you looking for a job as a fitness trainer? What sort of things should they focus on? Where should they put their time and effort? I do, I do, I do think, you know, the level of education um, is important um, and just the willingness and the openness to learn, no matter how old you are, how many qualifications you've got, having an open mind to take new research, learnings, other people's perspectives on board, you know, to a certain degree, health and fitness in the cutting edge of the B2C market is 20 years on from where the, the NHS is, right? My dad's a GP and I speak to some of the, some of the stuff he talks about or he's knowledgeable about, it's prehistoric. But, but some of the, the elements that we're working within and, and, and some of the research that some of my guys are, are taking on and is, is really quite exciting. But it's, it's the mentality to, to or, or the openness and willingness to learn is, is an attribute that I want through all of my team, whether you're 
a, a front of house or whether you are a personal trainer or a physiotherapist. Um, and that's where, as a business, we put you know a huge amount of importance on education. We have a big education fund within our business where people can apply for it, and then we fund various programs. So they're able, and then we also have our own in-house um, education program as well. That's really quite a brand orientated. But we also want our guys going out there and doing external courses and bringing new things back into our little ecosystem, so that we're constantly, constantly improving on that front too. Yeah, there's a, term, like there's a sorry, there's a term in education that we've we've had come up quite a lot, and it's a real big buzzword, um, and it's growth mindset, and it, it's great to hear that that growth mindset, that seeing opportunities where others don't, looking to continually develop and be better, it's great to hear that 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 growth mindset, that that value translates into other sectors of this industry. So thank you very much for raising that. Sorry for cutting in, but. It's great to hear that these these key values, these key skills, bridge all these different industries within the world of sport. It's, it's fantastic. Um, if I was, it sounds like you've got a really cool career path laid out for yourself and your team. Um, and it sounds like you're making a really big impact within your own sort of circles and your society. What's next for Will? Where do you want to go and how do you want to continue making an impact? The nuts and bolts of what, you know, every day it's, it's strange, right? I'm having conversations around a sinks broken in one of our facilities <laughs> to three minutes later, we are talking to potential investors about our growth strategy and raising X amount of money and uh, taking over the world. It, it, it's, and so I, 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 to a certain degree, I love that, that balance. And I'm, you know, talking to my guys, my newcomers who are straight into the business, whether they're front of house or a, a young personal trainer that's come through our academy program all the way through to you know our most senior board members who are hugely influential in international banks for example so i love that i love that variety that i get within the business um and that diversity of people that i get to talk to for me as an individual i i want to i want to see you fit really succeed um I, you know uh one for because it goes back to my overall objectives and, and that, that goal that I'm looking for and, and hits my vision of looking after my family. And hopefully if they ever got the chance of going to bed for school, for example, I would love that. Uh, and, and all of the little building blocks that, that need to get hit to, to be able to do that. But then yeah, leading within the industry um, from, from, from me leading UFIT and taking it to a place where I want to take it, obviously staying within this field and hopefully taking you fit to a place where it's a, an indus industry leader as well. And I would like to think that some of the conversations that we're having currently um, are going to give me the ability to do that. But ultimately it's up to me. It's what I do with the business and for however long the board and shareholders of UFIT want to keep me in place. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it at the moment. You know, it's, it's my passion. I absolutely love doing what I do. I, I do and that's 90% of, of what's important. Uh, and hopefully now I can start tilting the knee a little bit and, and giving you fit the platform that, that I need to, to progress myself as well. I love what you're touching on there. And I love the, the idea of enjoy what you do. And, uh, and there's a, a little theme kind of running through all of these uh, interviews. And you might see it on the wall behind me. Do what you love, love what you do. I think that's key to everything. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, it, it's always the case. There are some days where you go, I've had enough. I can't, I've had too many conversations, but as long as the good outweighs the bad and you've got a smile on your face when you wake up. And ultimately, I, you know, I love, weirdly, I quite like awkward conversations and challenging conversations because it means that I'm getting tested and I'm learning at the same time. So there are some times where, you know, you go you, and you can't see the wood for the trees and you're super frustrated, but you know, and that's probably one of my other, sort of skills I can sort of recover from that pretty quickly and I can get beyond that and hopefully get my heads up out of the weeds and, and see that bigger picture so yeah everybody no matter what you're doing you, you know especially when I was playing rugby you think this is I've just I've just had enough and and you there are periods where you don't enjoy it but it's offset against the elements that are phenomenal and the people you get to work with and and the opportunities that that get put on in front of you um, whether you're working in a business or whether you're working as a professional rugby player, having the ability to open doors and, and meet new people is something that I really, really value of, of 
of any situation I put myself in. No, that's 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 great. And there's been lots of really amazing uh, key points of information, nuggets we call them, golden nuggets to take away from this conversation. I mean, on the on, on the piece of paper I have in front of me, uh, big words like work hard, find balance, set your goals, find your grit, uh, enjoy what you do, know your values. I, I I really like that one. But the one that stands out to me more than anything else is is that growth mindset. You really you know we all we all appreciate a growth mindset. But also the idea of, of what you've spoken about, your experiences and what it is you're trying to build at UFIT, it comes across that to really achieve, you need to be a good person. You need to have empathy. You need to to, to want to create more good people. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And you also need the ability to reset and, and stay humble. I'd like to think I'm a fairly humble bloke. I mean, speaking about sort of defining elements my most defining element through my rugby career was actually probably it was a couple of years after I retired um, and I was working in the back office so I, I had taken a job with Harlequins on the, on the back office side on the, on the commercial side um, and it was two years after I retired and two years previous to that I was leading the guys out at the equivalent game so every Christmas at Harlequins we, we held a, a, a a big game it was called in front of 80,000 people we used to sell out Twickenham Stadium and two years previous I was literally captaining the guys and leading the guys out in front of 80,000 people then got injured had to retire moved to the back office team and instead of leading the guys out I was with the back office team putting out 40,000 flags in every other seat in the whole stadium and the ability and at that time I was there going wow <laughs> how life has changed right but that ability to reset and go well actually no this is what i need to do now to progress it's no point in me sitting back and going i captained these guys two years ago there's no way i'm putting flags out but actually going no this is what i do now and this is a really key part of the team that i'm involved with i.e the back office team and i'm going to go out there and i'm going to put the flags out as best as i possibly can uh, as cheesy as that sounds and and get in and and do what is is expected of me and what I expect of myself and what I would have expected the back office team to be doing when I was leading the guys out. And so even though I was playing a far smaller part in that match day experience or was two years previous, it was it's a part of it, which I was very, you know, proud to be part of. But taking that mindset through of, you know, having that 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 ability to reset and go, okay, this is where I am now next year I'll put out five more flags or whatever it is but as long as it's getting better um I would be very very happy with that well it's it's clear that no one can doubt your your work ethic or your resilience especially everything you've been through right we're coming to the end and, and what we like to do is we like to ask a few fun questions kind of delve into the psyche of Will Skinner uh, a, a little differently so um my little fun question is if you were the CEO of UFIT what else would you be doing right now? It's a, it's a very good question. I mean, I was dragged out to Singapore kicking and screaming by my wife um, five years ago when she got relocated out here with her job. And I, I came out with, you know, two years retired from rugby, very green commercially, had a pretty limited CV in terms of life outside rugby. I inevitably, I think I'd be in sales. Even though I'm an introvert, I love selling. I love speaking to people about something I'm passionate about and, and whether that's myself and selling myself or, or, or selling, selling a product as long as I'm passionate about it and I believe in it and I believe what we do at UFIT in terms of getting people to stay on this planet an extra few years, you know, and, and that's a phenomenal product that anybody should value and um, or every, everybody does value. I, 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 love, I love selling. So I would imagine I would have been in, in sales to some sort of capacity. But then at the same time, everything is sales, right? I was selling myself on a rugby pitch as teachers. You you sell, you know, life is to kids, right? And, and try to get them working to the way that that, that, that you think is, is going to make them happy ultimately. So um, I think in some form selling and hopefully leading in, in some sense as well. Thanks, Will. My, my strange question is uh, a little bit left field. So what strange habit or skill have you developed along your journey to get to where you are now? <laughs> uh, gosh, 
I mean, I, I, I don't know whether it's, I, I don't know whether it's a strange habit, but it's just something that I've always had and just in an enormous amount of energy. And I think I've always been someone hugely physical uh, and, and like the physical side of it. And inevitably now I've stopped playing rugby. My, my training does go peaks and troughs like everybody's does, but, but the, the, the ability for, for physical exercise and, the elements that that encompasses with that and i to be honest a lot of that comes in and around team at the moment and, and working out with other people whether it's in the class for example or in a sporting environment my my habit of of, of exercise and and uh, and physical pain to a certain degree and duress is probably strangely something that i quite enjoy um i've never been that keen on you know going on a holiday and just lying down on a beach and, and reading a book um i've always i've always found far more enjoyment about doing things uh, and getting stuff done and and i think that probably comes through to how i lead and 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 work with my team here and luckily enough for me i've been able to find a vocation and a business where it's pretty important um so yeah it's it's the physical nature of, of life and whether that's running around with kids or, or training with people or playing sport with people is, is a habit that I, I hopefully will never, never have to stop. Uh, it's probably going to be my body that stops me at some point, but hopefully a few years from now. Uh, thanks, Will. Well, hopefully UFIT can keep you going for as long as you can. Throughout this conversation, I've really enjoyed hearing about your stories, uh, hearing the affection that you had for the fitness industry, your teammates, and your resilience of being able to pick yourself up and get going again. Really great to hear your stories, and thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, Tavis. Thanks, Simon. Really appreciate your time. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Will, and it's great to hear you've, you've, you've done some amazing things in the face of some real, real kind of... Uh, problems and barriers so your resilience is definitely an inspiration to anyone listening to this so will thank you ever so much for your time